all day. Money, power, respect. Three the hard way. Um, one thing, like I, I, I use myself for example. Um, uh, one thing I noticed when I got older was that um, uh, like I always, me and Dion talk about this, and I, we always say black community, and I'd be like. We really don't got a black community where we grew up. I'm going to use that area. None of us own the houses. None of us own the stores. None of us own the beauty salons, not the schools, not the banks. So we didn't see anybody owning anything. And fast right. forward all my life, I kept living in apartments. And I'm like, everybody be like, why you don't buy a house? You got money, right? And I'm like, this when I was younger before I knew all this. And I thought back is because I lived in apartments my whole life. And every single person I knew lived in apartments. And in our community, nobody owned anything. It was everybody lived in those apartments. We just recycled blocks, moved to this block, moved to that block. And sometimes I think, like, out, outside of your normal consciousness, it's, our, it's kind of programmed. You ain't seeing right. it unless you seek out the knowledge. Like, uh, uh, what's her name? Rashid, uh, Rashid yeah. Me? Oh, Rashida. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah like Mike. Rashida. Right, like, yeah, because your name ain't on. It's like Rashida and Derek both are no. saying, like, they both kind of write. And unless you seek out the knowledge yourself and then come back and share it, it's kind of hard. Because when we was younger, nobody nobody told us anything about anything. Like, like it was just, okay, you're 18, get out there. Well, I, I'm, I'm, you know, you write it to a certain degree. But I remember when I was 15 years old, Derek explaining stuff to me about saving money and telling me, to put money to the side and different things like that. Now, not saying that oh, I yeah. not saying that I listened. Because you didn't. <laughs> but but he but but I remember my uncle telling me to save money and some about I remember I remember one time you was telling me something about uh something about saving money in the savings account is you better off putting it under the mattress or something like that. Just think about it. Where we grew up, but that, that was so of, long ago. I still remember that, though. Outside of baby sister now, right? Who owned anything else? Like everybody we knew, pretty much lived in apartment buildings that we stayed in. I mean, and, and, and we got to keep in mind too that you know when my when my mother and father came up here in the '60s and they came to. Uh, West Garfield, then later moved to North London, you had what you call redlining, where blacks wasn't allowed to own things, and every time they tried to own them, they were being double priced. They were being double priced right. to rent, they were being double priced certain properties, and redlining where the blacks, where the bank would refuse to uh, sell to certain, certain, certain individuals from certain segments of the community, and then they would have secret covenants saying, hey, if you sell to these blacks, then your property value is going to go down. So a lot of us mm -hmm. didn't have a choice to even purchase property, you know, uh, uh, as well. So we also mm -hmm. got to keep in mind, look at things from a historical context and keep those in, in, uh, uh, in mind. Even if you look at the VA and you look at the veterans when all them European war, they came back from war, they got the, the, the uh, low interest loans and things like that when they were to buy property. All the black men who went to war, they didn't get those same loans. So we all so have to keep in mind those different systemics and those situations that put us backwards for many mm -hmm. years because it's not because in many cases for a lack of effort or trying, it's because every time we try to do something, then there were actual laws in, in, on the table. So now look them up. So I'm not talking about, okay, where the white man holding us down and stuff like that. The law said that they held us down. So look at the law and see what it said, how the, how the banks conspire with the real, the, the real estate companies and how, um, you know, when you look at 60, 66, 67, when Martin Luther King came to North Londale, that was one of the reasons because blacks couldn't get uh, affordable housing that was very safe and sanitized. So that's what the protest was about when they came to live on uh, uh, 16th Street. That's why we had the King legacy. So mm -hmm. a lot of things were just denied to us anyway. And this is why we're 40, this is why we uh, 30, 40 years behind. And, and after, you know, the late 70s, then you had those other races came in and swooped in and bought all the properties. So that's why you have 95% of other races owning the properties in the community. So it's not because they're so smart. It's because system, systematically, systemically, a lot of us wasn't allowed to, to, to buy those properties and pass them down to our, our children to build that uh, generational wealth. So I think that's why we have to be educated on all levels today 
and understand when we see people in the community and they're going through certain things, this is why they think that way because they don't believe they have opportunity to grow anyway. Yeah, that's true. So it's all boiling back down to educating. <laughs> Go ahead. Get my Republican point of view. Huh? What, what's your Republican point of view? Oh, Republican point of view. Oh, you're talking to me? She got something to say. Oh, oh I thought you were talking to me. Let it out. No, because I'm going to get hung up on. You no, no, you're not. Come on. That's what that's what we about on Three the Highway. This, that's what this you want, is. Hey, you, you said all point of view. You said before I press record, you wanted a fight. Now you got it. <laughs> <laughs> she came to rumble. <laughs> that's okay, what she said, so, right? Okay. Yep. Okay, I'm I'm just gonna keep it PG. So understanding what we were subjected to during those times or during the 60s, the 70s, redlining, like Derek your uncle just spoke about the prejudices, the the hidden agenda, the the Tuskegee experiment, all of the things that the black the black people in America have been subjected to. We are fully aware of what they have done to us, still doing to us, and the ramifications of what they did to mentally how they still have us kind of handicapped um, in this in America. But my question is Not us, y'all. Whatever. Um, but Given that, why do we continuously allow what we know to be happening to continuously hold us down now? If I know somebody dislikes me because I'm Black, then do I sit there and say, you know what, I'm not going to even try because I know my skin color is going to block me from anything or going this way or going that way? Or do I say, no, you know no. what, fuck that. I'm going to figure out a way to get to point A, knowing mm -hmm. that we have white men B, white men C, the police, institutional racism, the, all of these things set up against us to achieve what we want in this life. I get so tired of, of not, of just defending the point, the truth. We have been giving the, the leg we, we had the leg cut off we've had to run the very same race but if we continuously give the reason we're behind the blockage to getting to the next level we will never get anything accomplished i just like I, and i it seems like every time you get into these conversations well you know what they did to us slavery still got us handicapped the the, the cops is doing this to uh, orange man is doing this to us come on y'all we know what they doing and you don't even have to be fake woke. But when are we going to say, you know what? I see what you're doing, but I'm going to pull resources in whatever manner I can to get what I have to do, even if I have to go to the drug dealer. And I'm not even <laughs> it, but if I have to go outside the law to get to where I need to get to, to get what I want, why we don't do that? Well, I mean, why you know, do we continuously allow white people to dictate to us what we're going to do? Stop no, saying no we say y'all. So, so I just want to say, as a community activist and community uh, advocate, I have uh, made plenty of trips down to Springfield and helped get certain laws passed to work with, specifically those men and women who disenfranchised, whether it be unfair housing or helping, you know, giving them uh, relief from their criminal uh, record. I haven't been an advocate for those individuals who face mental health issues. Uh, I currently work with over uh, 200 men and women right now, and I, I provide them with financial literacy. I provide them with computer literacy uh, skills, and I also provide them with job readiness skills, and uh, I'm also a mental health professor. So uh, there's a lot to be done. So I don't think we're just saying, um, sitting back and saying, okay, the white man did, did this and did that to us. But we also had to take in the fact that from a historical standpoint, if you take a deck of cards and, um, you know, each, each deck of cards and we play in spades, and if I'm getting all 13 spades every time, then nobody else is going to win. If I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to pick out the 13 spades, this is my deck, and you just play the hand that you dealt with, right? So then now, um, you know, as the game go on, after you begin to win all the money, you say, okay, well, fuck, I'm going to play fair now. But it's been like, okay, but it's been, you know, the last 40, 60 years. So, so I don't think that we're saying that we let anything to handicap us, but I'm saying we need to understand why those situations are the way they are 
And that's the only way we'll be able to overcome. Because if you don't understand the purpose of something, then how would you begin to use it? I don't think there's a person on this phone, and I'm not going to make this personal towards you or whatever. And I applaud your, you know, what you're doing in the community. But your type of empowerment, your type of investing into your community isn't really seen in the generations after you. Now, there are some that will go out there and they'll do that work and they'll, they'll pour into their brothers and their sisters or whatever. But for the norm, our generation after you pretty much said it's about me and my family. Now, I'm not saying that's right. I'm not saying that's wrong. But a lot of that, we the people, Black Panther Party, let's get, let's lift the, let's lift the whole race, kind of really bad out after you. What I, what mm -hmm. I see when we go that's, into that's, the that's communities today, I, I'm true. just telling you what I'm saying. I'm, I'm in the deep south. I see a lot of people who fake woke, fake conscious, saying that you know what I'm for the black people until it, you know, it until it knocks them in their door. Where it's in your household where the white cops are coming to your house interrogating you for this, 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 and this. And I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to the left. But all I'm saying is that I feel like as a people, we continuously use what the white man did to us and is doing to us as a handicap instead of beating this mug at his own game. I see what you're doing. Let's work together to go around you, through you, above you, under you, and don't accept no as an answer understanding where we came from and what they can't they continuously do to us I'm, so, look, I'm not i'm not gonna say what you're saying is wrong Rashida, because it is and I, I i agree with you and i i'm not gonna say what Derek is saying is wrong is he either but the fact of the matter is is that he who uh forget i don't want to sound like george bush but <laughs> he who <laughs> he who forgets his past is doomed to repeat it so we can't forget that that stuff happened. We can't uh, kind of like keep a side eye on it and, and, and think that it's still going on. We still have to believe that it's happening, but we also got to do what you say and try to achieve that goal again to point A. But we cannot forget about the shit that was going on before. We just can't forget about it. I just can't wake up one day and say, oh, fuck that shit that happened in the 60s. That shit wasn't me. Right. I agree. I think I think Rashida and uh, Derek is right in the sense of like what Derek saying that happened back then, and you know how Rashida just said like his generation that's how they felt, but the next generation said it's about me and my family. Those are the ramifications of what they did to Derek generation turn to us, where we saying okay, well it's about me. And I was gonna ask this question: Do we think that? A lot of people that know about financial literacy, and I know Derek, you doing you doing your stuff uh, back in the community. But a lot of us who know about it get out and get some form of success. We really don't go back and educate them, or even really care. We just know we gone, and we kind of just off to ourselves. We don't really go back and pull the next man up. Well, look, that, that I'm gonna say that's not true again, too, because no, no, I, I ask you, do you think that? Oh no, I don't think that because I I you know not often, but I take my dollars and go to the strip club and make sure those young ladies have something to eat. You know what I'm saying? That they able to feed their children and different is things that, like that. Is that strip club on Lindale 16? <laughs> no, it's not, it's not, it's not. So you ain't doing nothing for the community. <laughs> those on the KLD, those, those, those are down there, man. Those, those are black women. I mean. So real. I mean, yeah. this is what I would say when it comes to financial literacy. I know we got a lot of uh, uh, great black accounts and stuff like that. Uh, we got a lot of uh, men and women who they're good and they, they smart on invest and invest in the stock. But I think that, um, you know, as, as individual, as collective, you know, from, from us as like people, I think we have developed a sense where if we don't trust them. Yep. That kind of makes sense. So instead of yeah. me going to you, and I'm I'm gonna have I'm gonna pay you to do my taxes. I'll pay somebody else. Or well, instead yeah. of me, uh, you know, uh, uh, going to a black real estate agent, I'm gonna go to a white real estate agent. You kind of see what I'm saying? So they yep. said that we don't support of, each other enough. Right. In the black so for community. example, you know, they say that in the black community, they said the dollar reach out here in one time and it's gone. But they mm -hmm. said other communities usually circulate, you know, nine, ten times before we even leave that community. And I and I and one of the reasons is because we don't own those properties, we're not investing, 
uh, in each other, we don't trust each other enough to purchase from each other, then we begin to hate on each other. Well, I'm not shopping with mm -hmm. them. Oh, they think they this, they think they that. So I think that we have to begin to develop a trust and, 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 it, and we have to earn trust too. So we just yep. can't expect people to trust us. We have to earn people trust too. We have to be willing to trust because yeah, on a psychological level, you know, we sometimes may say, okay, well, I'm gonna go over here to this store because it's closer. So the black store is further down. So we like convenience. You kind of follow me? Yeah. So I think we have to we have to learn how to get back uncomfortable. So we didn't became too complacent and too comfortable. Just going, that's why we go purchase the bad food. So okay, well, I'm just gonna go to Limington knowing the food is no good for us instead of going an extra mile. So I think we have to begin yeah. to to stop looking for instant gratification, be willing to run that marathon instead of just trying to run a sprint all the time. Okay. I agree with that definitely. And I think also that um just just listening to you, Derek, and like um, I'm gonna just compare the generations. I think it's a it's a uh, like a disconnect between two generations. Like the knowledge you got and the knowledge we got, like, and we connect on the same levels. But like somebody else, like they won't seek out a person like you because you know they think it's a disconnect there. So like you know my little nephew, he's 21. He feel like he know everything. He could just I'm gonna go do this. I'm gonna go do that on my own. He not. He not seeking the wisdom from his family and the elders that could tell him, you know, to kind of guide him in the right way. And like Dion said, to know his history and to move forward. But he just rather do it on his own, like Rashida was saying, rather just do it on his own and fail on his own. And I think it's a disconnect in that, you know, when me and Dion, when we was young, you know, Derek told us a lot of stuff, showed us stuff all while we was out there. So we learned a lot from him back then. But how many people didn't really have that or, you know, the older generation, like whatever, or the younger generation, like skip that. So I think that's a big, a big problem too, is the disconnect between that. Because a lot of young people in these neighborhoods have money. Like you were saying, she the drug dealers or whatever they're doing, they got money. People on fans only, whatever. They got money, but they don't know what to do with it. So they just spending it, you know, so they don't even know what to do with it. They just spending it and they not looking for somebody who, who an uh, elder in the family or somebody who know what's going on and what to do with that money, they just, oh, I'm gonna just spend this, I can make it back again next month. And yeah. if you look up, you done spent five, ten thousand dollars in two or three months with nothing to show for it. Right. Okay, so we're gonna wrap this up because we've been running a, a very long time. I'm just gonna, you know, go around and we start with Tiffany, you know, you get your final your your final words and, and your final <laughs> tips. Um, you know, so we go ahead and wrap this up. Um, I'm overall in agreement with pretty much what everybody else was saying about we not educated enough. It's pretty much about if you want to, you know, get into it and learn about it, or if you do, you do. If you don't, you don't pretty much. That's what it is. Um, I would just encourage people to save more. Like I said earlier, think of the future. Think of long term. Don't think about today. But you got to think about savings and family, um, money that you can pass down to your children. Juanita. Um, basically, uh, I feel like the culture, I can see the culture changing as far as the support. You know, I feel like we do have, we do see a lot more of Black people kind of waking up, realizing that we, knew, we do need to invest our money and to our own people. However, like they said, we do have to build that trust up within each other. And at the same time, with the with the younger generation that's growing up, um, they come in with so much entitlement that I feel like they're not even willing to receive or know how to receive like assistance from, you know, Derek or myself or, you know, anybody else that is willing to, to give it to them. They, they're not really, understanding or willing to receive it they just want to give it to them so i feel like it's going to be harder going forward with the younger generation um but it's going to take like our generation to, to to push that knowledge to set up those life those life insurance those savings accounts to purchase those properties so we can put some of our children at an advantage um and, and give them the opportunity now whether they they have the smarts or the know-how or the willing to do the work that's that's what they're gonna struggle with, but I do see um, a lot of us trying to make that change. So I feel like we definitely will be getting to that financial literacy, 
but it's going to take some more work. Okay. Rashida. Um, I would just say, first off, establish a goal. I mean, before you, I mean, I would say establish a goal first and don't let anything stop you from achieving that goal, whether it's financial literacy or whatever it is. And I mean anything. If it's something that you're truly passionate about and you know in your deep heart that you want it, achieve it at all costs. That's it. Even if it's a pair of Jordans. If it's a pair, yeah. if that's your goal in life and that's okay. what you feel like, say, I, hey, I just, I just want to make two. sure. I just Don't want to make one, get twelve. Hey, them flowers came out the other day. Hell no, that cost too Not much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna pay you back on everybody else, and and I agree 100. Just uh, set set your boundaries, uh, know your limits. You know, don't try to overextend yourself. You know that that's part of the financial financial literacy. Don't don't just don't try to do too much too fast. You know, take it easy. Like Derek said, it's not a sprint; it's a marathon. You know, so take it easy and 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 don't stress yourself out. Don't forget that health is wealth. That's the first part. Stop going to McDonald's, Dion. <laughs> Double yeah, I think we just want to make sure that you know we can't. Oh, he make froze. Oh. He ain't froze. He just stood there. <laughs> I know. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think Boy, we Dad. can make progress, but we got to continue to be willing to have these tough conversations. So we don't, we're not willing to have a, a tough conversations, then we'll never be able to get other people perspectives on things to even be willing to change our mind. You know, like the young lady talked about, you know, setting goals. You know and not allow our past uh, experience to, you know, cripple us. So how do we begin to have these conversations so we could talk about, hey, what happened to our past, but let's not allow that to cripple us. And let's not shame people. And, uh, you know, we come together because sometimes we have to keep, uh, keep teaching over and over again. So I think we have to begin to figure out how can we bring all these thoughts together and then, you know, kind of like present it to, to some of the masses. We know everybody's not going to, uh, uh, get it. So I'm not like on some type of crusade to save the world, but you know, I think that uh, as intelligent people, we should be able to come together and share some of our experience and pass it on to others. So I, I'm willing to collaborate with anybody who's willing to collaborate with me. Right. And to piggyback off him, my last thoughts is I was going to say that also. I agree that this panel was excellent and some of the points they made. And it just showed me that so many different levels of people and all of us had our own way of thinking with financial literacy and we could reach all people on different levels each one of us so how do we bring this type of thing to those inner cities to educate those people that's what we need more okay i want to church what well, that's, hey, that's what they spend their money at. I'm, I'm muting your ass. <laughs> they get the money to the church. Hey. <laughs> they get the money oh, to the church. I'm muting your ass. I'm trying to go to the church oh, and get a loan. Hey. Start teaching that in the church. Can the, can the church give me a point hey, zero it's, seven? It's, 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 <laughs> Don't get on Jesus. It's, uh, it's <laughs> all, I said Jesus. I said the church. <laughs> It's all somebody always know how to end this show, goddammit. <laughs> <laughs> we want to thank y'all for watching. Y'all make, make sure y'all hit that subscribe button, that notification. <laughs> New shows coming soon. Wadita, Rashida, Tiffany, Derek, Real, of Dion. Thank y'all for watching. All day, money, power, respect. Three the hard way.